Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Today we're going to be looking at how to code three machine learning algorithms in less than 10 lines. And I guarantee you, if you know how to print Hello World, you can probably do these. So let's go ahead and get this code started. So let's first take a look at my Python toolbox. So whenever I'm interested in doing something with machine learning or deep learning, I usually just need these packages. And 99% of the time, this will be all you need to do really, really awesome algorithms, take your analytics to the next level. So first in these two videos, in this video, we're just going to talk about pandas and scikit-learn, but in future videos, I'm going to be sure to talk about PyTorch a little bit more and other deep learning libraries. So be sure to stick around for that. So pandas is an awesome resource that you can use to actually load in any kind of data that you find on the internet or any kind of tabular data that you find. So any kind of CSV or Excel file, if someone gives you emails in your Excel file, um, you can definitely unload this into Python using pandas. I think they also have SQL support. So it's a little, and it works with a lot of machine learning libraries which is why we're using it very awesome resource to use to transfer data to Python. So we're just going to be using it to reading some data. If you don't already have it installed, it's pretty easy. If you just run these commands, open the terminal, run these commands, there will also be some instructions below. Next, we're also going to be using scikit-learn. This is a really great package because it's uh, created in all these different models for machine learning, all these awesome different models that you can run on uh, different kinds of uh, data sets and it's really a great resource. I highly recommend you look into it and look at, especially the documentation is really good. It makes it really easy to run any kind of machine learning algorithm that you can think of. Uh, again, it's pretty easy to install, so just run these commands. Uh, one of them should work for actually Python 3. It depends on what your installation package is starting. So now that we've got everything installed, ready to go coding. Let's go. All right, so this program that I'm using is called Jupyter Notebook. You can look it up if you want to uh, go along side by side with me or you could just use any Python interpreter. Um, I also downloaded this hard data set in the description below that we're going to be using to illustrate some of these machine learning algorithms. So first, well, all we need to do is import our packages. So we just had pandas, and we're going to call that as pd. And we also want to import scikit-learn. And we'll, we just need this part of scikit-learn model selection um, in order to do what we're going to do right now. Uh, so that now that we have this, we have data frame equals. Um, and so I, I'm going to be doing a lot more than 10 lines of code overall, but this is just to show you, you can definitely accomplish all of these algorithms in 10 lines of code, but we want to definitely illustrate what we're seeing here. So uh, we'll load this data set from the description below um, and using pandas read CSV. And if we just return, uh, type in DF or print DF, uh, we see we get this uh, nice data frame, 303 rows and 14 columns. So now that we actually have our data frame, we actually want to split this into different data sets. And the reason why we want to do this is because we don't want to just train our models on the exact same data set that we trained on. Um, that would lead to overfitting. Essentially, we could just memorize that data. So in order to actually get a better estimate of how these models actually work, we need to split up our data set, train on a smaller section of the data set, see how it works on, the, on other parts that it didn't train on. And that will actually let us get a better estimate of how it really performs instead of just biasing our results. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, we can do again all these in part of uh, scikit-learn so scikit-learn model selection um, and so then we're going to have train test split and then we have the data frame we have the the test size so what size is going to be on the testing set let's say that's 20 percent of the training size so we're going to split the data set into two parts 80 20 and then we're going to have a random state. So this will just random state. will just make sure that we always do the same thing every time. Um, and so I should have just actually said that this was train and test. So then spit that out. So now we have, we split our data frame into training and testing. Um, and so now that we've done that, we can actually go and do this again, essentially, because we want, we want to actually get three different data sets and hopefully it'll be make a little bit more clear in a second. Um, but instead of train here, we're actually just going to use our DF. We're going to use train here. So now we essentially have, um, we split the data set from training and test, 80, 20. We split the data set again on that 80%, again, 80 and 20. Um, and so now we have three different data sets, the training, validation, and testing data sets. Um, and now we're ready to actually train, be able to see if we can train models and actually predict data that we haven't trained on, essentially. So now each of these train tests and validation, if we go ahead and take a look at them, we see we have 193 rows for training. Um, this whole thing is just going to count out. I actually don't know if we can just 49 rows for validation and 61 rows for testing, which is pretty much what we should expect if we have 20, 80, 20, and then again, 80, 20. Um, 
So then next we can actually look into splitting off the Y's and the X's. So we know that train, so essentially look, if we if we see our target variable is, is the last column, this is gonna be a one or zero. And this data set, this represents a heart data set. We can see I have age, uh, sex, chest pain, um, blood pressure, cholesterol, uh, these different uh, uh, variables. And I, I'd recommend you go look in variable because they actually, we'll, we'll talk more about these variables in a second. Um, but right now we want we know that the target uh, variable is in the Y column. So we wanna say train Y equals um, that column, right? And then we can just say delete train. So we're just essentially setting that target to a different one. And I'm writing this out kind of in a weird way, um, which is kind of verbose, but I'm hoping that this just um, takes into account. But you do have to be sure when, when you are, um, when you are doing this sort of thing that you need to, Make sure that you that you you pull out your Y's and your X's before you do your training. You just, your data set splits essentially, or after you do your data set splits, because you want to just make sure that when you do separate them, that if you shuffle them in any way, that the Y's are still related to them. But since we split already, we can just um, use the Y's directly. Uh, use these Y's as we know that they're that they're going to be directly related to it. So so we do these. Um, Cool. So now that is all ready to go. I'm ready to actually do some algorithms now. Okay, now so let's try one of the algorithms using scikit-learn. We're going to try SVM first. So we, all we need to do is say import scikit-learn. Um, actually, we should do from scikit-learn import SVM. And then here we can do uh, some model equals um, scikit-learn SVM SVC, we just see if that, yep, so that works. So then we can say model fit. And it's honestly kind of comical how easy this one, if you can get to this point, right? If you follow it this far, the actual rest of it is pretty easy. We say train, um, and then we say train Y. Okay, so let's train, let's fit the model with our training data and the Y of our training data. Okay, so don't, this is actually, uh, says it's working pretty much, this is the, the uh, the different aspects of our model, and you can look more into what these mean. I'm definitely gonna have videos about explaining SVM and, and these hyperparameters and help you uh, improve your models. But just know that we were able to define this SVM with the default parameters and then fit it to training data using this model fit. And then we can just check the score or the accuracy on the validation set. And it looks like we've got an accuracy of 71% uh, roughly. So that's honestly, you see how easy it was once we got to the data side, it's very easy to, all we need to do is essentially define the model, fit the model, and then evaluate the model. And that was kind of it. And, and you can see how kind of easy that is. And actually it's gonna be very similar to go on to the other one. So let's keep going. So starting with the random forest, it's actually very, very similar. We're gonna pretty much copy and paste most of what we're doing except for the import statement. So we can just say some scikit-learn Ensemble. So this is where we actually specify the um, the kind of model, the actual model that we use, and then we just say model equals, and then model fit. We can actually, in fact, I'll just copy and paste this. So same same exact thing. We're gonna fit the model, and then we're gonna score the model. Let's we'll see how it performs. So I forgot the function call here. Um, so this is, ends up being a little bit worse off than the SVM. Uh, so let's go ahead and try something else as well. Uh, so in addition, we're gonna try from scikit-learn linear model import logistic regression. So then we can do model, and again, like literally the exact same thing. I'm gonna specify the model and they're definitely, I'll show you, uh, I'll have a link in the description for scikit-learn. You can look into all the different kinds of models they have. Uh, but it's all very similar um, in how they're, you can you can just do the exact same syntax for all of them. That's kind of what, I think one of the reasons why it's really good. And uh, there's really, the case is really, there's not one machine learning algorithm that's necessarily the best for everything. It's actually a theorem called no free lunch theorem. You can look it up if you want, if you're interested more, but essentially is you have to try a bunch of different algorithms on the same data set to figure out what the best one um, for that data set for what you're trying to do is. And so, um, you know, this is it's having a package like this, like scikit-learn, uh, really, you can do a lot of these, you know, very complicated, powerful packages. And once you, I highly recommend that you look more into the functions you use, and even though you can kind of naively apply these without much of the statistics background, um, it would definitely help you out a lot if you kind of knew what these classifiers were for your given task. Um, 
But so once we have, now we have another religious regression that ended up doing a lot better on our validation set. So essentially what we'd say is that, okay, well now we, what we've done, we've trained these three different models. Uh, so let's kind of wrap up our results. So we want to say, um, we know that basically the model score is the accuracy. We know that we have three different models for the SVM, the accuracy is 71%, uh, 69% on, from the random forest and 79% on the um, logistic regression. So next, we're actually going to try to evaluate these on the testing data set. Okay, so what I've done here now is I've actually taken and saved each of the models that we just ran for the SVM, for the random forest classifier, and the logistic regression model into three different uh, model two, model one, two, and three. Um, so we expect model three, which would be the logistic regression model, to perform the best on the testing set because that performed the best on the validation set. So let's go ahead and see if we're true. Uh, so yeah, so it ends up that we only get 52% from the SVM, 67% uh, on the random forest, and 77% on the logistic regression. And you can start to see that these are all very biased. These are all biased, uh, you know, none of them are as good as they were supposed to be as, as we thought they were models. And that's that element of overfitting. So yes, it's really easy to apply. And I hope you learned something. And if you did, definitely leave a subscribe, a like, so that YouTube can actually learn something using their deep learning on my, uh, on our likes. And you can help me uh, reach other people and help me out there. But the idea is that essentially um, you can naively apply these algorithms to these sorts of data sets very easily. And I think it's very important, and we're gonna talk about in the next video, about how we should really go into the depths of these data, make sure our data is properly normalized and clean before we do these models, because I think we can definitely improve this. So stick around, and we're gonna to look to improve these models a little bit more. Thanks.